What's going on, pussy poppers? We're ready to continue with Dream Daddy. Let's hope if the pacing picks up. I know a few of you have sort of noticed the pacing's a little slow in this game. That's some of the criticisms I've seen about it. Uh, and where's that hot dad action and a few smacks from some daddies? While I'm doing afternoon word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple letters in a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. Ooh. Hey, my coupons. <laughs> I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Ooh, large yellow envelope. What's with each little dialogue? This is getting hotter. What is this? What is this? It's a cactus. It's simply a cactus zen farm. All right. It's okay. Hmm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda? She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Now, can you come back later? Uh, okay, just thought you'd want this big old envelope we got from HIA, which probably means you got motherfucking accepted. <laughs> Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Horn Institute for the Arts? I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. <laughs> Father, please. I hand her the envelope, but she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. Eh? And the suspense is killing me. This was her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. Hmm. I can't believe this. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't. Yeah. I got in! Oh, shit, give me a high five! That's a good smack. That's a proper smack. That means you've been doing good, Amanda. I got in! Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie, that's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student, you nailed that interview, and your photography is incredible. Where's her? We can see her photography. Is it as good as Max Caulfield's? Did she win? What was the contest in fucking Life is Strange Young Photographer? What is Mr. Jefferson's fucking contest? And why am I Mr. Jefferson? And why is this going to... We're gonna get the see the secret ending. I think is the dark room, and we murder our daughter. Jesus Christ! I just solved it. The Everyday Heroes contest. <gasps> she won. Amanda won the um, Everyday Heroes contest. Oh my God! We really are Mr. Jefferson with a changed name, a changed life. Wait, Dad. I know Amanda. I can't be trusted. I know this one's really expensive and it's so far away. Bitch, you can take out the loans. <laughs> I think for a moment, HIA was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I know she has her, had her start, heart set on it for the longest time. Dude, they'll give you hella money though if you have a single parent, Amanda. Seriously, I, was, I told my parents they should get divorced so I could get more money for school. It'll be tough, but we're gonna make it work. Cause all my friends, with their, they, some of them had single parents and they got good fucking money. Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. Yes. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice, wherever you want. I got this. Wherever. Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tear tearing into our fo foil-wrapped burritos from a nearby food truck. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito with a view. I can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes. I cannot wait till you're gone, Amanda, and I can have fucking... Oh, I'm gonna have all the dads over at my house. Oh, yeah. There are all these galleries nearby, and there's a discount if you bring your student ID. And, Amanda, slow down. You're gonna choke on your burrito. I know, I'm just excited. Did I mention that students get their own studio space once they're seniors, and we get all the professional photo editing software for free? It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it between bites of her burrito. I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed. Oh yeah, that's gross. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You take a survey online and they match you with someone with similar major and interests. I bet we're gonna be best friends. 
Craig and I were a good roommate can be a lifelong friend. Me and my roommate started off really fucking good. And then the second semester, I don't know what fucking happened. She she wasn't even going. I don't know. She wasn't there. So I kind of got the room to myself. So it was awesome. But yeah, we went along. We went from being like super close to like, I don't know what happened. But don't even get me started on bad roommates. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. Carl ruled. Hey. Oh, they let you have animals in the dorms if you get a note saying you need one? I bet I could forge one. I think I'd get a rabbit, or maybe a snake, or maybe both. Would the snake eat a rabbit, though? Oh boy, I think I'll leave all that up to you. She's so excited, I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega. Hmm. Didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? Um, what dumpster fire, Amanda? Did you start- did she start a fucking dumpster fire at school? What the hell is wrong with you? I sh that's some shit I might do, though. Hmm. That might be cool to watch it burn. I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need you to knock it out of the park these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. I pat her on the back. I just tried really hard at my ACTs and, like, did well on those. And then I got... I got 10,000 per year at school. It was pretty sweet. Think you can handle a 14 hour drive to come home for the holidays? There are gonna be some treacherous icy ice roads to cross. And don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. My eyes immediately well up with tears. Hmm. Oh, dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now, and you're such a good person. I hope you know how important you are to me. All right, we get it. She understood that when you bought her the burrito. We don't need the mushy shit. Dad, stop. You're going to make me cry, too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's going to make it sad. taste sad. <sighs> I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss on her on the forehead. Mm. Love you, kiddo. Ah. Love you too, Pops. Like, I can tell my parents love me by them giving me food. I don't need that. Welcome. You've got dads. Okay. So you can... So basically, you can date all of the dads. You can do all this. I think you just have to avoid a third date with each dad because I think that sort of ends things. At least that's what someone told me in the comment section. So if you guys have been lying to me, you get the smack. I will find out where you are and smack you. No, I won't, but <laughs> that's an empty threat. And it wasn't a threat anyways, it was just a joke. Right. You cry in your burritos daily? I sometimes, have I ever cried into a burrito? I don't think I've ever cried into a burrito. It's hard to cry into a burrito for me because then you got a burrito. Like I might've cried before the burrito. And then once I had the burrito, it was like, oh, okay, well let me stop crying. Cause this is way better than that. And then you just sort of lose yourself in the burrito for a bit and then you can continue crying. Craig. 100% Craig. I don't think Craig's gonna judge me, so. Well, unfortunately some of the, the dialogue options again with Joseph, like when I chose die before diet, like I didn't know he would go on a nihilistic rant. Like how was I supposed to predict that from die in diet? I didn't think it would go that far. I wonder what Craig's up to today. I navigate to Craig's dad book page and type out a message. Hey bro, or should I say neighbor? Let's catch up like old times. A couple moments pass before I hear a ding on the computer. It's a message from Craig. That was quick. Bro, hey my man, let's definitely hang soon. Might be a little different from our old weekend long benders, but it'll still be fun. I think for a moment. This could be a fun opportunity to see my old buddy in his new element. We exchange a couple more messages and he logs off to prep for the game. I should see if Amanda wants me to uh, wants to join me. No! No kids! No children! Kill all children! I walk over to Amanda's room and knock on the door. Don't kill all children. Yo, Amanda Panda! I open the door and find Amanda sitting across. Do you want to be the third wheel? <laughs> hey, would you like to be the third wheel, Amanda? Please say no. For the love of God, say no. <laughs> it's 
Surrounded by magazines and newspaper clippings. She seems to be making some sort of art piece. What you working on? Huh. Just a collage for my class. We're supposed to make a piece that represents our goals for the future. That's nice. I take a look, a closer look at her collage. That's a lot of dogs. Hmm. It's mostly dogs, yeah. Did you need something? Craig invited us to a softball game. Wanna go? Oh no. Remember that one time you signed me up for softball and you brought, bought me all the gear and then you took me to the first game and then someone hit a ball toward me and I just ran off of the field crying, pussy ass bitch! And then you hid in the dugout and would scream if I tried to pick you up? Yes. Uh. I was afraid of baseballs. I thought you were a gigantic sentient softball. Um. Okay, so that means you don't want to go, right? Please. No more parenting simulator. Dating. Dating without the children simulator. Amanda gets up and looks me in the eye, determined. Aww. I'm finally ready to face my fears head on. Let's do this. God damn it. Fucking. She didn't get the point. <sighs> Is this game dirty? It seems PG for some reason. It's pretty PG so far. There's a lot of parenting so far. And, uh, you know, I did what I go, I went on one day with a dad and half of it was talking to his creeper kids. So Amanda and I make the short drive out to the local softball field for a kid's softball game. It's pretty packed. Oh, is this kid's softball game? All right. I guess the kids are going to be there anyways. We, at least I have my daughter to, if those kids are weirdos. We, but they're playing the game. I don't have to deal with them. We clamber up the bleachers and take our bleachers and take our seats on the top row. I don't see Craig anywhere. Aww. So when do the kids start crying and running off the field? You know that your relationship with softball is different from everyone else's relationship with softball, right? Okay, but if I don't see some kids cry, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. Hmm. For nostalgia purposes, of course. Not because I take joy out of children fighting for my amusement. <sighs> It's okay, Amanda. I literally said kill all the children a few minutes ago, so. I'm not any less fucked up than you. Definitely not that. The game starts and the kids run out onto the field. I see Craig by the dugout with a clipboard. He has rivers strapped to his chest as per usual. There's a guy in a pancake costume doing jumping jacks across the field. I guess that's a mascot. Reading the kids' brightly colored jerseys, I see that it's the Maple Bay Flapjacks against the Pinewood Ocelots. Go, Flapjacks. Oh. Choke up on the bat, Miranda. Oh, that's Craig. Sorry. Okay, I'll use his voice next time. Yeah, Miranda, square up, bitch. How much do you know about softball? Enough to know that the balls are relatively hard despite their name. Hmm. But yelling is fun. <laughs> Give it a shot. It's cathartic. Keep your eye on the ball. What's important is that you're having fun. What are you willing to sacrifice to win? Leave it all out on the field, Miranda. If you want this, you're going to have to bleed for it. I broke my thumb playing softball. Some bitch fucking slid into it. And I kept playing. I wasn't a little bitch. Who I, and I could bend my finger all the way back. It was my thumb, and I bent it all the way back at the game. And I said, ooh, look at this, but I'm going to keep playing. And then afterwards, I went to the hospital and got that shit wrapped up. And then I couldn't play anymore that season. Who I assume to be Miranda's father gives me a dirty look. I shoot it back at him. That attitude isn't going to bring Miranda to D1. Mm -hmm. Dad, please don't fight any other dads while we're out here. I'd be more action than I've been getting, Amanda, so I wouldn't even care. We watch a couple innings of softball. They aren't ready for the major leagues yet, but Craig's trained his team pretty well. It seems like he's really good with kids. Keg Stan Craig is good with children. Whoa. Huh. It's amazing how hard they're hitting the ball and how no one has run off of the field crying yet. Amanda dear, you have to let it go. Hmm. Let what go? I'm perfectly fine. The opposing team is up at bat. They hit a fly ball out into the center field. The tiny little girl tries to get around under the ball, but it misses her glove and hits her straight in the forehead. Whoa. See, it's a complete unjustifiable fear. The girl plops down on the grass and starts crying. Craig makes a beeline to her, checking her forehead and comforting her until her parents arrive. He carries her off the field as she sobs. <gasps> yeah, I clap when people get brought off the field. Man, it's strange to think about how this was the guy who once backflipped off of a roof and into a pool while shotgunning a beer. He's so responsible now. The game resumes after the girl calms down a bit. We watch a couple more innings. 
Craig's team is crushing the other team in the ninth inning. The Ocelots seem to have given up by this point. I see one outfielder eating fistfuls of grass. The game resumes after the girl calms down a bit and we watch a couple more innings. Craig's team is crushing the other team in the ninth inning. The Ocelots seem to have given up by this point. I see one outfielder eating fistfuls of grass. I batter on, the other team knocks a foul ball into the stands. I follow the trajectory and... Oh no, it's coming right for me. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. I close my eyes and brace for impact. Bitch, catch the fucking ball! I open my eyes and look over to see Amanda holding the softball, staring at it in amazement. Thanks, Amanda. God, is my character a useless bat batch? Batch? I can't. I'm sorry. I'm going to take a drink of my coffee. I really can't speak today. Ah. I caught the ball. Well, thank you. God, you saved me. Hm. I caught the ball, Dad. I caught the ball. You did it, Amanda. I faced my fears. I defeated the softball. I can do anything. Amanda and I share a big hug. It's a tender moment that I don't think anyone else watching really understood. Dude, Amanda's killing it today. She's actually killing it today. I'm proud of you, kiddo. No, it's coffee. I'm not drinking alcohol. The game ends and Craig's team are declared the victors. We sit patiently as the girl. <laughs> it's fucking coffee, Amanda. Don't you come at me. We sit patiently as the girl is slight enough to shake hands. <laughs> Great job. Great job, everyone. We walk over to the dugout to congratulate Craig, who's talking with some of the parents. Craig, great work, man. Thanks, we've been working hard all season. It's great to see it paying off. I'm so proud of all my girls. Speaking of which, have you met Briar and Hazel? Oh, God. Yes, hello. Hello. Hey, killer playing out there. Mm. Yeah, you guys rule. Thank you. You guys are twins, huh? So which one of you is the evil one? That one. Yeah, yeah. Hazel. Hazel. Yeah, it's me. Hmm. Good looking out. Hmm. Do you guys ever pretend to be each other? I don't have a twin, but I think if I did, I'd be doing that constantly. Yeah, I take all of her math tests. And I usually throw rocks at stuff. When people get mad, I tell them I'm Briar. Little bitch. What? Hmm. Uh, we will talk about this later. Hmm. Ben, bro, I just got a couple more things to clear up. clean up. Then we can hang. Sounds good. Just then, one of the moms jumps into the conversation. Not so fast. We have to celebrate our win, Craig. I'm taking the whole team to get pizza. Oh, oh I, I don't know if I can. Nonsense. The girls won. What sort of celebration could we have without our fearless leader? She lays her hand on his shoulder and gives him goo-goo eyes. Man, this mom is laying it on thick. Man and I share a look. She wants a dick. Man, she's laying it on more than me. Smack that bitch off him. I can lay it on too, ho. Hmm. All right, all right. Is it cool if my bro comes along? The mom looks slightly put out, but covers it up with a smile. Of course. You want to hit on me, mom? Then she comes to like lay it on me. Then I bounce. I, I, I sidestep. She misses me. She falls on into mud. And then she's just muddy and, you know, trying to deal with that. And then I go on to Craig. Huh. That's how you defeat the moms. Where are we going? Thirsty's Pizza? What? Hmm. What? It's a real place. An endless stream of girls clad in softball gear pile out of a minivan and onto a local pizza buffet, which is usually called Thirsty's Pizza. Amanda and I trail behind them with Craig. Reminds me of all the awful pizza we put into our bodies back in the day. Oh. Janets do ruin everything. How come, uh, I don't know, in within the last two months, every Janet in every game I have played has tried to steal our fucking man? If you are a Janet watching this video, like, smack yourself, please. Just smack yourself. Actually, don't. That's not a threat. It was a joke. Anyone named Janet, you let us know. Re you need a, a, a report stat about how many men you have stolen. <laughs> All right, quick booty clap and we can continue. Ah, pizza codes, I can never forget. How did we survive college? Hmm. Our bodies were younger back then, more elastic, more able to handle the toxic waste we put inside of us. 
<laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> the good old days. Kids run around playing arcade games and eating greasy food. It's been a while, Craig, all right? I'm just... <laughs> Amanda and I jump on a couple slices of mediocre pizza. Hey, give me a pizza that. No, absolutely not. Ha, uh, I'm just kidding. I'm strictly eating salad here. Dude, Craig, you can have one slice of fucking pizza. I mean, I guess maybe not. I mean, maybe if you're on like a no carb diet, I guess I understand. Thanks for addressing the issue, Amanda. Oh my word. Dad! A different mom walks up to us talking to Craig as if we weren't even there. Craig, thank you so much for looking after our kids. My daughter tells me every day about how great you are. Jesus, get these bitches some towels. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm happy to look after them. Definitely helps that I have kids of my own. It's been so hard since Daniel left. I'm glad to know that my children have a, a strong male role model in their lives. Bitch, Martha, back off my man. A man and I look at each other again. Craig gets it from all angles, huh? Craig smiles sheepishly. Huh. Thank you so much, dude. Craig holds his fist up for a fist bump from the mom in what I think is a maneuver to lighten the conversation. He looks super uncomfortable. I should throw him a bone here. Could I create a di diversion? Smoke screen Martha? Let's smoke screen her. All right, we're going back to my wingman days. I gotta run the blocking pay play. So Martha, it must get lonely without Downey, you know. I also happen to be an eligible single father. Let me save you, Craig, I got this. I waggle my eyebrows at her. Pass. Oh, excuse me? <gasps> I remember that working better in the past. She turns her back on me to talk to Craig. So, I'm taking Hazel and Briar tonight for the sleepover. Mm. Yup, they're pretty excited about it. You'll keep them out of trouble, right? Oh, of course, but I could always use help watching after everyone tonight if you're not doing anything. <gasps> wow, this lady is really going for the gold. Holy shit! Ha! It, it'd be ni actually ni be nice to have a night to myself in River, but thanks for the invite. Hmm. Uh, Martha, you might want to grab your child. She's stuffing pizza into a coin slot. Jesus, Martha. So, so invested in getting cock. Your child's fucking stuffing pizza into a coin slot. Be a better parent, Martha. Martha angrily turns her attention toward her daughter. Give that daughter a smack! Tiffany, not another arcade machine. I swear if we have to buy it. Martha storms off towards her kid. She seems <laughs> nice oh. and easy. Yeah, the team is one big weird family. Takes all sorts, right? Yeah, family where all the moms are trying to fuck you, right, Craig? Jesus. Tiffany, don't eat the tokens! Oh. Tiffany's a stellar hitter. Whew. I finally think I have time to talk to Craig now. Man, you're a busy guy, huh? Nice. Only on days like today, I hope. Dad! Huh? <laughs> hey, girls. Dad, can you help us beat our record on DDR? We told ha Ariana's dad that you could destroy him on the dance mat. Please help. Oh. Girls, you know I don't have my jukes anymore. But Dad! <gasps> Craig looks at me like a hurt puppy. I don't know. Sorry, dudes. Duty calls. I promise we'll catch up in a bit. Fucking cock-blocking little horse. It's all good, buddy. Craig runs off with his daughters, and I'm left alone with mine. Great. Great! Talked to her all fucking day already. Man, I was really hoping to hang out with Craig more today, but it seems like he's getting dragged in every direction. Definitely wasn't like this in college. Feel like we might be a third wheel here. Oh. There's worse places than an arcade to be left to your own devices. You're right. Wanna drop some coin on pinball? Yo, let's put some pizza in coin slots, Amanda. Fuck it. Amanda and I pull up to a machine that's pretty hot and we get to work. I'm a little rusty, but the pinball wizard within me will never die. I pull out a decent score and then challenge Amanda to top mine. And immediately she gets multi multi-ball. Looks like she takes after her father. You're pretty good. Ugh. Don't patronize me. Hey, just trying to pay a comp. 
Amanda stresses me. She's in her zen zone. She fights valiantly, racking up points by the millions. She's this close to beating my score, but I feel honored just being able to watch. You're friends with Craig, right? Oh, Janet. Hi, Janet. <sighs> She's asking for some help getting that D. Well, I will not help you. Janet from earlier walks up and leans on the pinball machine. Uh, yeah, we went to college together. Um. Please don't lean on my thing. Huh, that's so interesting. So do you know if he's, like, available? Can you not lean on my daughter's fucking pinball machine? She's trying to get a fucking world record. Oh, I honestly don't know if I could say. Hmm. Seriously, you're going to make a tilt. Because it's just, it seems like so much work to watch after his kids. Don't you think it would be great if he... Lady, I swear to God. All of a sudden, a buzzer sounds and the game is over. Janet made the pinball machine tilt. <gasps> <gasps> oh, you did not just do that to my fucking daughter, you fucking pig bitch. I'm gonna fucking shove pizza right down her fucking throat. Ah. You stone harpy. What? Ugh. I said I have to go over there now and put pizza in my mouth so I don't say anything that'll hurt your feelings. Amanda. Dude. Bro. Dude, I don't tell that fucking mom off myself. Why is that character telling the fucking mom off? I will fucking tell her off. Get off the fucking machine! It wasn't that hard, bitch! What's going on? Mm -hmm. Now's our chance. If we don't get out of here now, we're gonna be stuck for the rest of the night. I wrangle Amanda and say some quick goodbyes with Craig. We head out of the pizza place, finally. Amanda promises that she'll keep the couch warm for me and heads home. Mm -hmm. Ooh! <laughs> I might get a little spooked out when they turn off the lights, Craig. Hope you don't mind me bringing you back here, bro. Not at all, dude. It's good to finally get you all to myself for a second. River burps. Oh, well, okay. It's not perfect, but it's better. Well, almost all to myself. <laughs> Hold up. Craig walks over to the trunk of his car, pulls out two gloves and a softball. All right, that's not exactly what I had in mind, but... Up for some catch? This might be less catch and more you throwing the ball and me running after it, but sure. Girl, I can do catch. Ben! Ben is a disappointment. We stand in the middle of the empty baseball diamond and start tossing the ball back and forth. Oh. I have a cooler in my car that we could grab, but there's only juice boxes in there. Dude, I like ju dude, I can I can take let's see who can have the most juice boxes. Man, fatherhood is strange. You're telling me I can't believe I'm looking back on my keg stand Craig days and reminiscing about it. Those were some good times. I don't know anyone else who could pull off the rare horizontal keg stand. Mm. It was a feat of discipline, bro. Trust me. I, wait, should we not play catch when you have a baby strapped to you? <laughs> like, uh, I don't think it's a good idea, Craig. Like, I know yeah, you seem like a good parent, but I'm going to have to, like, you know, throw some of my own parent wisdom on you and just say we probably shouldn't play catch because the baby's in the middle of your chest. And I think the baby might get hit with a ball and die. I don't know how resilient babies are, but I heard that their skulls are still a little pliable. And you don't want a baby with a softball face. Ask about coaching softball, ask about the business, ask about the kids. That's enough for now. <gasps> so you run a business now? Bro. Yet we sell fitness gear, imports, and exports mostly. But we're coming up with our own line of athleisure, athleisure, <laughs> athleisure swear soon. I can't say that, Craig. That's a big mouthful for me. But you know what else could be a mouthful? <laughs> I nod. Sorry, I can't breathe. I nod. I mostly use my sweatpants for watching TV and not, you know, sweating. Sounds like he'd make a killing. If you ever need athletic gear, I've got your back. You could sponsor me. I'll rep your athleisure brand, wear brand while I mow my own lawn. Oh. That is the glamorous lifestyle we're catering to, yes. No, I'm not drunk. I just have speech issues. I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, babies are pretty strong. Well, technically they're bouncy. That's why they can survive falling long distances. What? Can 
babies survive falling long distances. All right, about 2,300,000 US children under 14 years old are treated at a hospital for, for a fall annually. Of these, a mere 80 die of the fall, though a much larger number are permanently injured or left in persistent vegetative state. More, most, more than half of these child falls are accounted for by toddlers age five and under. What? We got, mil we got a million something toddlers falling out windows every fucking year? What the hell's going on, U.S.? Dear Lord. I mean, I got, you got to keep your eye on those motherfuckers. Fucking kids are falling out our windows. Jeez, I had no clue. There was a baby falling out window epidemic. How could I have known that? <laughs> Jeez. That's hardcore. It's, yeah, it's raining babies. Uh, does he, like, want me to ask about this stuff? Let's try. I'll test it. I'll ask about coaching. All right, I guess he does. So a softball coach the life you wanted, or was it the life that was thrust upon you? I'll admit that I was hesitant at first. Brian Hazel had so much energy that we just had to get them into sports, but no one was there to run the team. The more I did it, the more I saw how much it meant to all the girls. I'm worried there'd be a riot if I quit. I would also be afraid of a bunch of tiny children with metal bats. They're quick and they work as a team. I've trained them too well. They take you down like a pack of velociraptors on a T-Rex. Exactly. All right, we'll ask about the kiddios. Can't believe you're a father of three. Neither can I, neither can I. You know me, I'm an indecisive person. You switched your major four times. Oh. Yeah, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life, but raising kids, when Brian and Hazel were born, it all finally made sense. It was like all the time I had spent trying to figure things out led to them. I couldn't be happier about it. I don't think I've ever cared about anything as much as I care about them. I had the exact same feeling when Amanda was born. It was the best thing to ever happen to me. It could be the only thing that ever happened to me and I would still be proud of the life I lived. Oh. It's nice out there, quiet. A nice, what? It must be good to get away from the softball moms for a bit, huh? I... Christ, Janet. Yeah, that was a lot. Are they always like that? Mm -hmm. Actually, this wasn't nearly as bad. Yikes. I don't know. I'm just so not interested. Well, what are you interested in? And is it me? Or me? Oh. Or me? Oh. Peace and quiet. I can be quiet. I can be a lot of things. That's hot. That hot, hot silence. Hey. <coughs> Excuse me, Craig. I just didn't think I'd see hear you say sexual fantasy. All right. My ultimate sexual fantasy is sleeping in on a Saturday. Oh. But more seriously, I just can't get back into dating right now. I couldn't even if I wanted to. There's no time. Oh. And I feel so uncomfortable trying to introduce a stranger into my girls' lives. They've already been through so much. I can't put them through that. Buddy, I hear you. Oh. So, the moms can hit on me all they want, but the girls are my top priority. You're doing a great job. The right person will come along eventually. Hit softballs. Don't get hit on by moms. The right person will come. Uh, uh, actually, I think I just say it. You're doing a great job. Those kids love you. And add to that, the whole team loves you. I think you got this dad thing down right. Hmm. What is all this breeder propaganda shit? Right, man? <laughs> Throw these kids out. Keep them on the softball field. Never fucking come back. We're over it. Thanks, bro. Uh -huh. That means a lot coming from you. Well, I'm distracted. I miss the softball hands. Hits me right on the head. Wow, that hurts. Amanda was right all along. Mm -hmm. Sorry, dude. Craig runs over to me. Mm. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I didn't want to play catch. <sighs> Wait, let me do the dad thing for a second. Craig spends a moment examining my head. Oh, no. It's worse than I thought. Don't tell me you have to kiss it to make it better. Please don't tell me that. No, don't tell me that at all. <gasps> Nice. <laughs> I'm just becoming a worse version of the moms that were hitting on him. <laughs> you would be so lucky. That was planned. I mean, kissing is for the weak. Oh, if we say that, does it mean he'll not want to be weak and will kiss me? And I'm super strong. I do a couple push-ups to prove how strong I am. Regular ones, not the modified ones. Those are for quitters and people with good knees. 
I'm a strong dad who is capable of raising children despite past mishaps with projectile objects. Nice. Easy there, tiger. I get up and dust myself off. River yawns. Hey, little buddy, you must be getting tired, huh? Oh. I hate to say it, but I should probably head out. Sorry things are so... You get older and life just kind of gets in the way, huh? It's fucking little bitch clock blocker! We start walking back just as things were getting fucking hot! The baby fucking yawns! You can't even smack a baby! Hey, remember that one house party we went to that got broken up by a helicopter? Hey. How could I forget? You and me hopped over a concrete wall to get away. But the other side of the fence was a parking lot where a bunch of cops were parked. Hmm. Oh man, yeah, could you imagine the look on our faces? We just walked straight past them like we were out for a stroll. And not knowing that we were at the party, they started joking with us about how big of a bust it was. We had to walk with them for 30 minutes. You told them you were interested in joining the academy. Do you want to test this theory I just discovered that you can, that millions of babies are, are, are hopping out windows uh, on the daily and they survive? Do you want to test it out? Hey. We can test it out. And then, and then they started giving me pointers for the exam. Longest 30 minutes of my life. Man, college. Oh. Good old days, right? We get back to our cars. Craig pulls me into a hug. <gasps> or at least as much as we can manage with a baby between us. Fucking little cock block, hug block, everything block. Mm -hmm. Never enough time, huh? Kiss block. Guess not. Oh. Let me make it up to you. Let's hang out soon. Yeah, without the fucking baby. I'd like that. Ayana as I walk through the door, spotting Amanda hunched over her collage, glue stick in hand. Burning the midnight art oil. Yeah. Figured I might do something productive between episodes of Shark Hunter lip sync battles. Do the sharp sharks lip sync or do the shark hunters lip sync? Huh. Yes. I look over her shoulder at the collage. Amanda, this is some good art. Look at this good art you made. Thanks, I'm just about done. Like before, it's still a lot of dogs. In one corner is a giant pile of cash, and the other it's... Amanda, is that me? Mm -hmm. Yep, the whole thing is about my goals for the future, and those are basically just to sit on a pile, giant pile of money with my 20 dogs and also have a strong and mutually supportive relationship with my father into adulthood. Look, I'm trying to get rid of you, though. But if you have any issues, if she could call it a giant, giant pile of money, I might come back. Oh, now you've done it. Get ready to watch your dad cry. Here it comes. It's happening. Ah. Aw, oh, Dad. Do we need to cry for everything? You did this with your good art. She pats me on the back. Huh? Hey, how was your hang with Craig? Ugh. Amanda, don't even fucking ask me, man. It was good until that fucking baby cock blocking bitch. Mm. Yeah, dude, the softball life isn't for quitters. Also, I'm very proud of you for facing your fears today. How does it feel? I'm on top of the world, Pops. I should start facing my fears more often. Oh yeah? How about tomorrow we hit some empty parking lots and practice? Dare I say parallel parking? Hmm. Baby steps, Dad. Don't fucking mention baby! <laughs> Don't you dare mention baby again, Amanda! You shut the fuck up! I'll work my way up to it. Alright, I'm gonna hit the hay. Take care of late night television for me, alright? I'll let them know you said hey. Mention baby. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Is she kidding me? <laughs> Alright, I've already got an A plus for that shit. Are these score I feel like these scores don't even make sense. What is an S? Just like back in college. I've missed <laughs> Just like back in college, he said. Is that a good thing? Wait, there's dad points and then there's daddy points? Oh god. Oh. The hell? Superstar? S is for superstar? I hope so. S is good. It's the best score. S is above A. <gasps> yes! You know, I did get all the right answers. He kept you having little that. hearts flow out of his ass. And, um, you know, we almost got kissed until the baby was a cock block. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do. We should we do a sec- let's do a second date with him. I, I can like- cause yeah, you get three dates. So as long as we don't do the third one, we don't need to get his ending just yet. Let's just see what the second date's like. I better- we better fucking make out at least. Maybe even some sort of rubbing? We don't need to go all the way, but like, huh. I'm losing my patience. 
I really want to get some good quality time in with Craig. The last time we hung out, he was so busy with the kids and fending off flirty moms that I feel like we barely talked. Ever since the first time we hung out, I've been trying to get up a little early for runs. I don't think I'm going to be as embarrassing as last time. Maybe I'll even be able to catch up with him now. I type out a message to him on dad book. Hey man, been training on my run game recently. <laughs> Ready for round two? Holy shit. My run game. Dude, of course, emojis. Oh, I uh, don't know why I just didn't just send an emoji rather than type it out. Yeah, emojis, man. Another message pops into my inbox from Craig. Let's meet up early tomorrow morning for my favorite morning activity, brunch. Brunch. Oh, I see what you did there. Fuck. Gotta fucking run. But, you know, I don't mind running if you don't mind not bringing your fucking baby. I mean, I guess, don't. He has to bring the baby. The baby has no one else. Fuck, I didn't even... <sighs> Craig and I agree to... Amanda, can you watch this baby? <laughs> Craig and I agree to a time to meet in the morning, and I have a chance to spend the evening hanging out with Amanda. Oh, are we doing pizza tonight? Uh, again? Can't we do, like, a salad night? Huh? Dad, are you on a health kick? I... not yet. I formed the committee to examine the possibility of being on a health kick. They haven't returned with their findings. Mm. Dad, if you go on a health kick, then I have to go on a health kick by virtue of being under the same roof as you. I don't know if I have the constitution for that. Uh, I'm sorry, Amanda. It's time. Not if I have something to say about it. Bitch, you're leaving soon anyways. Just to have some salads. Suddenly, Amanda lunges for the phone before I can stop her. She has a pizza place on speed dial, of course. Hey. Hi, yes. Can I get an extra large pizza with chicken bacon, extra cheese and tomatoes, and a couple of the garlic sauce cups? <gasps> Amanda, you're going a little north here. She gets to smirk! I'm gonna tell them I didn't fucking order that because I know you ain't got the money, Amanda. She doesn't have the fucking money for it. I'll give that guy, I'll give the guy who delivers a little tip because he came all the way out here. But I'm gonna say I didn't order that. That was a prank to my house. Sorry. Not cool. Oh, right. Can you maybe throw some leaves on there or something? Yeah, he's going on a health kick. Yeah, Rico, I know. It's tragic. Amanda listens for a second. Hold on, I'll ask. Mm. Dad, is oregano a salad? Oh my god. Oh! <laughs> Can't blame me for trying. Nah, Rico, I'm talking to my dad. We'll just go with the meat lover's fantasy, sir. Sure. Say hi to the wife and kid kids <laughs> for me. Amanda hangs up. Yeah. Rico says, hey. The food gets delivered and we plop down on the couch to get eat some za. Okay. Just be careful. Running is a gateway drug. It's a gay? Toy drug? Wait, what do you mean, Amanda? Do you think I have a chance? It's a slippery slope, Dad. First, you tow on a couple light jogs, and before you know it, if you're converting the garage into a home gym and renewing your subscription to some sort of weekly kumbacha delivery service. Ooh, that stuff's pretty good, though. It's not that bad. I was like a little bit... Of, doesn't it have a small percentage of alcohol? Question. Shoot. What's kombucha? Kombucha. I don't know how to say it though. <laughs> I just get it at the grocery store sometimes. Okay, so you aren't too far gone yet. Huh. I'm just giving you a hard time, Pops. I'm really happy you're running more and caring about your health. I want to keep you around for as long as possible. That stuff has like kombucha has like those. Um, we have like a whole like we have little friends in our stomach that are little. My what are they called? What is it called? The little friends in your stomach that help your system? Your gut bacteria? It has that and it helps your friends? <laughs> I sound so fucking crazy, bro. I just don't know what to call the things. The little gut bacteria. <laughs> probiotics, thank you. Yeah, I'm talking about probiotics. There we go. Thanks, kiddo. Speaking of which, I'm running with Craig tomorrow. You gonna be able to keep up with him? Hey. <laughs> Probably not. I think every time we shit, we shit out of like 500 million of our friends in our stomach, our little gut bacteria. It's so sad. It's really sad when you think about it. The poor guys. What if we're just gut bacteria in God's gut? No, it's a simulation. It's a simulation. Mm -mm. There's no way that's true. <laughs> Stop drinking, Kelly. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's coffee. And I need more of it because I'm, like, delirious right now and I can't think of words. 
like probiotics. We laugh and eat more pizza than is probably healthy in the name of carbo loading. I call the night early, so I'm ready for tomorrow. When I first start running in the mornings, it was pretty hellish. Now that I'm a few sessions in, it admittedly has become a little bit easier, despite it always ending in me dry heaving over a trash can. Is that what the runner's high is? Just dry heaving? I lace up my tennis shoes, throw on a t-shirt from a writer's summit I went to 20 years ago, and head out the door to, at a moderate jog. Craig is already outside with River strapped to his chest. Bro. He's dressed head to toe in color-coordinated running gear. Wow, I look like a total schlub next to this guy. Oh, we should oh man, we should have went to like a 24-hour like Walmart or Meyer. Do they have 24-hour targets? I like Meyer. I don't know how many people have Meyer. But it's 24 hours and like that shit's it's decent we should have went over there and got some like nice discounted athletic wear and looked really fucking good hey bro morning craig river gonna be running with us oh. best as she can we're taking it to the limit aren't we kiddo goo hmm. oh i know what that means craig hands her a stuffed toy which makes her smile ear to ear mm -hmm. That's Arnold the Capybara. Sometimes it's the only thing that'll get her to stop crying. Wait, those are cute animals, right? I just wanna see their cuteness. Oh yeah. I always think of these as like, they're sort of like kiwis, but not kiwis. Oh my God, this one has friends. <gasps> Look at all the friends. Oh my God. It's like mom's on Craig. That's sweet. That's really sweet. <gasps> They're kissing. Uh, oh my god, it also has friends. <gasps> oh no, sh whoosh! Oh. <laughs> Look at the babies. <gasps> a watermelon. All right, I need to stop. Give this. A oh my word! What the fuck is that? What the hell? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Jesus Christ! This. What? What? <laughs> Get it away. <laughs> Take it off. Holy shit, I just that was amazing. That was a good that was a good Google image experience. Sometimes it's the only thing that'll get her to stop crying. Dude, that just made me so happy too, Craig. <laughs> Kelly has left her body. I think I did. Jesus. Oh, I've been there. Amanda's a stuffed panda that she carried around everywhere. She would have a tantrum if we try ever tried to wash it. It was gross. They have like the same sort of like butt as a kiwi. So you've been running lately? Every morning for 30 minutes. I'm basically an elite athlete by this point. <laughs> uh, well, I'll try and keep up. So where are we headed? Oh. I was thinking that we could do a couple laps around the park. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Oh. Then we'll do some hill climbs up a slope. Alright, I could probably handle that. Hmm. And then we'll close it off by doing some wilderness survival hike running to increase our agility. I'm suddenly struck with the overwhelming need to crawl back into bed. Oh. That sound okay to you? I usually like to throw some timed murder sprints in there, but I'll go easy on you since you're a beginner. That sounds like something I am able to physically do. Bro. Bitch, throw the fucking murder sprints in there. I don't give a shit. I'll do it. Gotta show him I mean business. Great, let's get started. Even if I'm puking the entire way, I just force myself. And if I die, I die. Whatever. Craig and I finally arrive at the park. A few other lone joggers make their way around the perimeter, and River waves enthusiastically at everyone we pass. It's a lot more peaceful in the mornings, aside from birds chirping and River gurgling away in the stroller. It's pretty quiet. All right, good warm up. That was the war. <laughs> that was the warm up. Hey. Let's start the show. Hey. But wait, there's more. Craig reaches into his bag and tosses me a water bottle. I fumble it, but thankfully don't drop it. Oh. You gotta hydrate, bro. Take a long drink from the water bottle and feel it reinvigorated. Man, I don't drink enough water. Hey. I look down and pick up Arnold, River's toy, and hand it back to her. Must have dropped this. Thanks for looking out, bro. Hey. You ready? My body is collapsing in on itself. I can't, you can't even, like, if I was to choose that and it's just, they, they don't take jokes, so we're just gonna say yes. You cannot be sarcastic about your running abilities with him. We finally finish our however many tenth 
lap around the park. I'm breathing heavily, but I can't believe I actually didn't lose Craig. He's even breathing heavily too, which makes me feel a little better. I look down at my shirt and notice that I'm drenched in sweat. Huh? Almost like, looks like a frowny face. That's one. <laughs> what? Bro. I'm just kidding. Good hustle out there. I'm really impressed. You're way better than last time I launched you off a treadmill. I've been working on it. Yeah, man, you really pushed me to my limit just now. I can't believe I hell on. Sometimes you just need someone there, someone there with you to push you to do your absolute best. I'm glad I could be that guy, bro. <laughs> Who's ready for hill climbs? What? Oh. There's my little cheerleader. Ben, you ready? A casual ugh. You bet. Craig takes me to a separate portion of the park where there's a steep hill that seems to go up forever. I strain my eyes to see some other joggers at the top. So, what do we do now? Wait, can a baby get shaken baby syndrome? If he's running with them? Because inevitably, won't the baby bounce up and down, up and down, up and down as you run? And then the baby's gonna be get a shaken baby syndrome and fucking die? <gasps> oh. Craig, you monster. You fucking monster. We run up the thing. That looks like a lot. Oh. Ben, there's two things you need to know about this hill. One, don't stop running till you get to the top. And two, Craig points to the top of the hill. Hey. That's not the top. Ugh. Let's do this. Oh. Not without strapped. Okay, good to know. Good to know. I finally reached the top of the hill after making my way past what I originally thought was the top of the hill. Once there, I hunch over onto my knees and gasp, gasp for air. My lungs are like daggers poking my ribs. I can feel my heart in my ears. Yeah, but are we like, okay, we're on our knees. That's a good start. We need to like poke our ass out a little bit while we're gasping for air. So he gets a good peek at what we're, you know, offering to the world. And by world, I mean him. <laughs> River, I'm having a moment, please. Who boy. Craig looks like, Craig, Craig, <laughs> hey, Craig. Craig looks like he's taken a beating as well. Ha, so he is human. Ben, put your arms on your head and stretch out your elbows. It'll help you breathe better. I do as Craig says. It feels a little better, but I'm still in agony. Oh. And here. Craig tosses me the water bottle again. I hydrate like my life depends on it. Thanks, dude. Hey. Phenomenal work. You feel that lightness in your head? That's the runner's high. Oh, I only get the runner's orgasm. Oh, that's it. I thought I was just, you know, dying. Oh. Want to take it slow for a bit? You know, once things start rubbing nicely together as you run. All right, never mind, Craig. Never mind. Just don't ask questions, please. I would like that very much. I would like. I would like that very much. Whatever my voice is. As we're catching our breath, River starts crying. Oh. What's wrong, Sweepy? Do you want to play with Arnold? Craig looks around us. Hey. Oh boy, man, down. I think we lost Arnold. River keeps wailing. Oh, nice. my. I've abandoned my child's toy. We gotta find him, dude. Should be simple, right? We just gotta retrace our steps. I remember River last having it down at the bottom of the hill. Mm -hmm. Craig and I jog down the path, searching high and low for the stuffed capybara, which Craig takes the time to explain to me is a large rodent native to South America. We get to the place where River might have dropped it, but it's still nowhere to be found. Hmm. Looks like we've got a mystery on our hands. We have to get to the bottom of this. I suspect foul play. Looks like this is a prime case for world-renowned Detective Dover. Detective Dover? Ooh, I like the sound of that. Dude, it's time for a bro venture. A bro venture? Oh, wow. I was way ahead of you, Ben, so why don't you just back the fuck off? Oh. We high-five and decide to jog back to the park to see if we can find any leads. Hmm. So, it looks like there's a couple more places to check and some bros around here that we could inter interrogate. Sounds good. Nice. Wait, who's good cop and who's bad cop? Think about it for a second. Well, I think that with your stature and overall resilience, you would make an intimidating bad cop. But, on the other hand, <clears throat> you do have an adorable baby strapped to your chest, so that softens the edges a bit. Mm -hmm. All valid points. I think you would make a great good cop because of your congenial attitude and willingness to try new things. <laughs> we could try a lot of new things, Craggy. <laughs> but then again, I've seen how you get when there are too many commercial breaks during a show, so you have the potential to be a scary bad cop. Bro venture where you just friend zoned? Fuck! You're right! God damn it! Have we been friend zoned? 
I don't want to have to watch Mead Hell in three minute segments with five minutes of commercials in, in between. And they're loud. The commercials are too loud. I just want to watch my shows in peace without people yelling at me to buy wiper fluid and stuff. Huh. Gross. Case in point. Let's play it moment by moment. Mm. Smart. Mm. So, where to, protective? Go to the playground, go to the field, go to the woods. Um, uh, playground. We make our way over to a small playground at the edge of the park. A couple of kids play on the jungle gym while parents watch at the nearby benches. Over on one of the benches, I spot a familiar face. Oh, Joseph's there. Oh, Joseph, you fucking dick. You dickhead. Can't take my jokes. Now I'm with another neighbor dad. Let's see what Joseph's up to. Hey, Joseph. Did you see who I'm with? We jog over to Joseph, who seems to be engrossed in his book. Nice. Joseph? Yeah. Joseph nearly drops his book. Uh. Hey, guys. Didn't think I'd see you two out here. Ben, are you exercising? Sure am. You know me. I just love to run and be healthy. That's kind of my whole thing. What are you reading? Oh, oh just a book on knots and rope tying. For boats. Boat ropes. Right, yeah, that's right. I wanted to like get with you and steal your boat, but that didn't quite happen because you couldn't take any jokes. Oh. Say, you didn't happen to see a stuffed capybara around here. Mm. What's a capybara? Mm. It's a large rodent that's native to South America. Joseph thinks for a second. Oh. Hmm, haven't seen one around. I'll tell the kids to keep an eye out. Your kids are here? Bro. Joseph looks around. Oh. They were here a second ago, must have gone exploring around the park. Do you know where could, the, could they have run off to? They're kids. They get into mischief sometimes, but they always come back. All right, thanks for your help. That sounds a little suspect, Joseph. Do I see a, a little thing of sweat right there, Joseph? What is that? What is that, Joseph? I want to know what the fuck that little thing on your face is. Mischief, you say? I, uh, wait, am I being interrogated right now? No, yes, no. Just doing our due diligence, Joseph. I don't know. Ornal means a lot to River here. I mean, you're more than welcome to ask Christian and Christy. I imagine they have their ears to the ground on all the latest playground drama. They might be somewhere around the woods. Thanks, Joseph. We'll let you get back to your rope book. Oh. Bow ropes. <sighs> Fuck off. We head back to the playground. Look for clues, try to calm River down, move to another part of the park. Clues? I mean, I guess we could look for clues, but like, why? Craig and I, two grown adults, walk onto the playground and begin examining it meticulously for clues. I mean, it's a, how much clues could there be? There's no forensic evidence here. No stray capybara hairs, at least. After searching fruitlessly for some time, we look up. All the parents are staring at us. We smile and wave as we awkwardly slink away. Try to calm River down, move to another part of the park. Let's go to another part of the park. Where to now, bro? Ah, uh, the field, go to the woods. Where, where, where the fuck did we run, Craig? We should look there. We make our way to the outskirts of the park. There are a couple of benches by the dense tree line. Looks like Robert's here all by himself. This also seems like the perfect place to look for clues. Joseph's twins must be around here somewhere. Alright, another... Robert, what's going on? Maybe Robert saw something. We walk over to Robert's bench. Hey, hey Rob. Mm. Don't call me that. Okay, hi, Robert. Mm. Don't call me that either. Um, okay. Hey, buddy. I don't know. What are you up to? <laughs> thinking. This is my thinking bench. <sighs> I have to get a solid two to three hours of brooding in per day, filling quotas. Hmm. Ha. Have you by ch any chance seen a small stuffed capybara around? Capybara is, mm. it's a large rodent natives to South America. I fucking know, bitch. Nice. So, have you seen one? A stuffed, a stuffed one, not a real one. That would be weird. Mm -mm. Be good cop, be bad cop. Just be good cop. Come on, Robert. The sooner you tell us what you know, the sooner we can let you get back to brooding. I don't know. Bad cop time. Robert, if you don't help us, I'm going to put you in a headlock. Mm. Is that a threat or a promise? Oh, <laughs> he's turning into one of the mommies now too. Whoa, slow down. Oh. Robert, back off my man. I've been working really fucking hard at this, Robert. Back off. Great, thanks, Craig. Fucking thanks, Craig. I, what I asked would have been fine. He would have let us know. 
Return to the woods. Joseph twins must be around here somewhere. <sighs> Just gonna go to another part. I'm d I've dabbed deuced where we should go next. To the field. Wandered out to a grassy field at the center of the park. There isn't a whole lot to see, but there are a few figures camped out on a blanket, and the grass could hold any number of secrets. Interrogate River? Wait, let me try this. It's always the culprit you least expect. Get eye to eye with River, who still looks like she's on the verge of tears. Oh. Bad cop. Where's Arnold, you fucking cock-blocking baby? River starts crying uncontrollably. Whoops. Oh, no. I'm sorry. It was just- It was a joke. Jesus Christ, it was a fucking joke. God. No one fucking takes jokes in this game. That's- no, don't, you gotta admit it's a little shitty when jokes are like pretty much 80% of the game and then as soon as you start joking around, the dads get all butthurt. Like they haven't been like throwing jokes all back and forth all fucking day and not everyone's being hella sarcastic in everything they're saying. And then as soon as I fucking do it, oh no, it's a motherfucking problem. Now you've done it. Bitch, I'm helping you. River screeching is louder than ever. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Craig is exhausted. Ah, oh. oh, buddy, I got a rain check on brunch. I need to get River home and calm her down. All right. <laughs> Good luck, bro. Thank thanks, bro. You yelled at a baby. What? What? <laughs> I yelled at ten babies. I don't give a fuck. Nice. Good cop. Look at that, me getting the hearts. I'm so good at this game. Hey, sweetie, believe me. Nobody wants you to find your capybara more than me, but we need more clues, and I think somewhere in that baby brain of yours, you might have something that'll lead us to the perp. So what do you say, kiddo? Whoa, 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 whoa. Switch inside the hell? I turned to crack. We're getting nowhere with the witness. We maneuver back to the brain. I mean, <laughs> To the field. What am I talking about? <laughs> Matt and Carmen Sita. All right, I'll hit them up. Let's talk to Matt and his daughter. Carmen Sita spots us from across the way and waves. She's sitting down with her dad on a sunny green patch of grass. We chog over. Hey. <laughs> hey, dudes. Hey, bro. We just sat down for a picnic. Want some snacks? Hmm. Got anything to increase my glycogen reserves? Uh, we have apple slices. Oh. Thank you very much, tiny bro, but I should be fine. Hmm. You guys working out? Good day for it. Yep, I'm the picture of health and athleticism. Mm -hmm. Good transition, Ben. Say, you haven't seen a stuffed capybara around here anywhere, have you? Hmm. What's a capybara? How do people not know what that is? They're so fucking cute. How can you not know what they are? It's a large rodent that's native to South America. Wait a second, how do you know what a capybara is? You wouldn't happen to have had hands-on experience with one recently, would you? She knows because they're fucking cute, Ben. We learned about capybaras in the fourth grade. I think it's more suspicious that you know what a capybara is. Um, oh my God. What if I took Arnold? What if I'm the culprit and I just don't remember? Didn't we take him? I was thinking, didn't we grab it? But no, we gave it back to the baby, right? I'm pretty sure I read that we found it and then we gave it back to the baby. I quickly checked my body for any Polaroids I might have kept on my person to remind me of who to trust and who not to trust. I saw a Memento once, and I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Oh, yeah, the pictures. Nothing. But what if that's what I wanted myself to think? No, Ben, don't let them win. I shake off the thought. I saw a couple of squirrels over by that tree, though. I don't know if that helps, but if you want to see some cute squirrels, you should definitely check that out. Oh. Thanks for the hot squirrels tip, Carmen Sita. Well, we better get moving. Gotta find that Kevin Bear before River here has a breakdown. Oh. Good luck. Let me get some apples for the road, though. Carmen Cita hooks me up with some road slices and we're on our way. <sighs> Can we just go to, like, fucking um, whatever department store I choose, wherever, and just get a new fucking capybara pet or some shit? Because, like, we've been looking all over. Look for clues, check out those squirrels, move to another part of the park. Let's look at the cute squirrels. Where did the suspect say the squirrels would be again? Oh my god. 
<gasps> Squirrels are so cute. Forget this. What? Oh my God, look. Rolling with my baby squirrel, mama squirrel. Rolling with my baby squirrel. Look at those babies. Oh my God, look at those babies. Oh. Oh, but you know what's even better? Honestly, chipmunks. Chipmunks are so cute. Even the adult chipmunks are so cute. Oh. We have a lot of chipmunks. We have a lot of bunnies. There's like, you know, every few, uh, I don't know, is it every seven years, bunnies go like crazy and fuck a lot. And then there's a bunny invasion and an epidemic. Got a lot of bunnies around right now. <gasps> oh my God. I got my boots. I got my boots. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. All right. <clears throat> oh, where is she? I think she didn't she say the tree? Ah, there they are. Carmen Cita was telling the truth. These are some rad squirrels. River seems happy. This may have brought us some extra time. We maneuver back to the field. All right, uh, another part of the park. I looked everywhere. Clock's ticking, dude. Where are we going next? I'm just staring at his fucking face like, let's just go to the fucking store and get a new thing. We obviously lost the motherfucker. We've looked everywhere. God. All right. Um, let me re-examine the field. We didn't do everything here. We didn't. Let's look for clues. We carefully comb through the field of grass and flowers. I can't seem to find much besides a couple of ladybugs and a nickel. While I'm looking, Craig calls out to me from across the field. Ben! Oh, man. Jog over. Craig is kneeling in the grass, inspecting something. I approach, my heart in my throat. As I lean over Craig, I see it. This is Arnold's leg. I put my hand over River's eyes. No one should have to be subjected to this. Senseless violence. My God, who or what would do this? Oh, man. I don't know, but now I think we might be dealing with something beyond our grasp. Dude, it's the fucking squirrels! They probably shoved the fucking capybara, they probably ripped it apart, then shoved it in their cheeks for later. They couldn't fit the leg. There wasn't enough squirrels around to fit that. I couldn't look at this anymore. I turn around trying to wipe the image of the stuffing strewn across the ground from my mind. We're running out of, we're running out of time. We may already be too late. Bag and tag it. Let's keep moving. We maneuver back to the field. All right, another part of the park. I'm starting to put the pieces of this case together. I have indigestion. Better keep moving. All right, playground. We head back to the playground. Huh. No, we already did all that though. We were still holding together, but not for long. Her tiny eyes betray a barely concealing, concealed broiling rage just beneath the surface or something. She's a baby, I don't know, let's move. That's where I wanted to go. We didn't look for clues here. Joseph's twins must be around here somewhere. All oh, right, look for clues. Craig and I search through the outskirts of the woods, hoping to find anything that might lead us to Arnold. There are a couple of cigarettes and an empty beer can stretched or scattered around the thicket. This is probably the hot spot for edgy teens to hang out at night and say swears and stuff, but it doesn't look like there was any recent activity that might be kept very related. This might be a dead end, partner, bro. River's screeching is louder than ever. I'm exhausted. Craig is exhausted. Nice. Ah, oh, buddy, I got a rain check on brunch. I need to get River home and calm her down. <sighs> he ruined it, right? Fucking Craig ruined it. All right, first off, I didn't ruin it this time. Motherfucking Craig ruined it by, like, being the bad cop with Robert. Calm your own fucking baby, bro. <sighs> this is a pretty nice playground. Might as well get a couple swings in. What about Arnold? Maybe having a little swing might help calm River down. Might buy us some more time. You're right. She's about to go nuclear. This might prepare her for the possibility of us not being able to find Arnold. Life is cruel and tough, but at least we'll always have swings. I like swings. Craig straps River into the baby swing and gives her a gentle push. She giggles. I take a sh I take a seat on the swing next to her and immediately realize that I'm stuck. River seems to love that. Craig eventually helps me out of the swing and we decide to get back to the investigation. We head back to the playground. We already looked for clues here, but it's still here. Craig and I have two grown adults walking on the playground. Yeah, we already read that. I don't know why it's still there. Cause Now go bad cop Robert. All right, all right, all right. 
Is he even still here? I don't even think he's still here. Oh yeah, he is. Okay. Oh Christ, what now? I'll be the bad cop this time. No, Craig fucked us over last time. Don't fuck it up, fuck it up again, Craig, or I will slap the fuck out of you. Robert, I'm gonna keep being vaguely threatening until you tell us something useful. I haven't seen any goddamn can't be bear, okay? Crap, I was really nailing the bad cop bit too. I thought for sure we had something. Oh. Now what, bro? Joseph said his twins were around here somewhere, but I have no idea how we're supposed to find them. Uh, wait, those creepy kids, why didn't you tell me they had something to do with this? Huh? Maybe I should have left the good cop, bad cop routine of the pros on TV. Hey. Yeah, Robert, bro, do you know where they are? Oh. I do a lot of people underestimate the senses of a man who broods. Saw them lurking around here a little while ago. Where'd they go? Hey. Ran into the woods. I'd be careful though, I don't trust them. Then again, I don't trust anyone. Mm. Not even you guys. Mm. Not even that baby. Rap. Mm -hmm. I take that back, you're an old soul kiddo. Mm. Thanks for your help, Robert. The woods. <sighs> go deeper in. Go deeper into the woods. That's the most excitement we've got so far on dates with the daddies. <sighs> I stare into the, it's been a while, all right? It's just been a while, all right? I'm desperate. I stare into the depths of the forest. Who knew what could be in there? Are you prepared for what we might face in here? <sighs> yes. I'm ready, partner bro, you? Mm. Nope, but if it gets River to stop crying, I don't care. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. We start down the path into the woods, keeping our eyes and ears peeled for any sign of Arnold. There are no squirrels or birds anywhere. The silence is unsettling. The sun can barely peek through the canopy. It's colder here. Suddenly we hear voices. I wanna do it. You gotta do it last time. Uh. Craig and I come to a clearing where we find Christian and Christy kneeling over something. Oh god, they're doing like creepy voodoo or like fucking baptizing our fucking capybara pet. Stop right there! And put your tiny heads where we can see them. Christian and Christy just stare at us. You heard the guy, put your hands up! We're kind of in the middle of something here. Yeah, can you come back later? What are you kids doing? Cutting stuff up. My heart is pounding. Is this, is this the end of the line? I step closer. I can't believe what I'm seeing. A pair of safety scissors lies in the dirt and <gasps> it's Arnold. What have they done to him? Hey. Arnold, you little serial killers. Goob. You heard the baby hand over the capybara. No fair, finders keepers. No, not finders keepers. That's our property and you desecrated it. Well, how can you prove it's yours? Just fucking grab it from them and tell them to fuck off. Craig holds up Arnold's severed leg. I have to look away. Mm -hmm. You two got sloppy. You left evidence behind. I think you'll find that this leg fits perfectly onto his body. Christian and Christy look at each other. They don't know what to do. How about a deal? You give us the capybara and we don't tell your dad about this. I have such a problem with developers slash directors making children threatening like TF their two feet. I'll just drop kick them. Right, exactly. Just drop kick the motherfuckers. That's what I'm saying. Or just like it's as simple as grab their fucking scissors because they shouldn't fucking have those scissors. They're cutting shit up. I mean, I guess that's what you do with scissors, though. Just fucking grab the shit and tell them to fuck off. Their dad won't believe them. Fuck it. And if he does, we'll fucking lie and say they were cut. They stole our toy from our baby and we're cutting it up and that he should discipline them. It's easy as that. Fine. She hands over the stuffed animal and give us those safety scissors. They are clearly no longer safe in your hands. See, look at them. Snatch their motherfucking scissors. She hands them over. I'm glad we could figure this out. Come on, partner. Craig and I start making our way back out of the woods. He turns around and calls back to the twins. Oh. And tell your dad to stop letting you watch true crime shows. With the capybara back with its rightful owner, Craig and I shamble into a nearby cafe, exhausted from our adventure. We find ourselves a corner booth and settle in. No, this should be like eye for an eye. Hammurabi's code. We should have ripped their one, both of their legs off. Just one, I mean both, I by both I mean one of each. And then you know that now they know how Arnold fucking feels. Oh. That was a tough case, but we cracked it. We're different now. We've changed. Did we get in too deep? Hey. It's nothing a hearty brunch can't fix. 
My stomach grumbles. I suddenly realize how big of an appetite I worked up. Brunch! Give me brunch! I have a strong philo I have strong philosophies on brunch. Mm -hmm. You see, the first thing you do is divide your brunches between bougie, bougie brunch, the upper class mimosas and eggs benedict brunch, and grimy brunch. The Just give me some fucking brunch, Craig. I don't need a fucking thing like this. Just give me the fucking brunch. There's a time and a place for both, and I think most of life is about figuring out which one you need more. Mm -hmm. So what kind of brunch dad are you, Ben? <sighs> bougie. I don't care if it's a 99 for what's essentially instant oatmeal and a slice of mango. The plating is just so nice. A fine choice. A young waitress passes out menus as Craig situates River into a high chair. Is this your kid? Oh. You betcha. She's so cute. Hi, you. <clears throat> hey, kid. Middle school is going to be really tough, but if you can make it through, then you can make it through anything. Just let us order. I'm fucking starving. The waitress walks away after winking at Craig. Well, we got to be nice to the waitress. Or then he'll think we're a bad person. Seems like you're the most eligible dad bachelor in town. Guess so. Anyway, here's the thing about brunch. You don't do business during brunch. Brunch is a time for rest, relaxation, and restoration with those that you love. And while we're having a brunch at a traditionally brunch time, the most important thing to remember is that brunch isn't a time. It's a state of mind. Bitch, I know what fucking brunch is! If you can't have brunch on your plate, you can always have brunch in your heart. <laughs> I don't disagree with you. I just don't know if I can match your intensity. Oh. It'll up it'll open your eyes, bro. Just you wait. We order our food and the waitress, after very blatantly hitting on Craig multiple times, eventually brings us our brunch feast. River munches on cereal right next to us, more or less managing to get it in her mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, drink every time he says brunch. I gotta say, man, it's really great having you back around to hang out with. Things have been so busy with work and fitness and the kids. I just haven't had time to really go out and get to know people. With you here, it's like we're picking up where we left off. I know the feeling, man. Moving to a new place could have been really rough for me. Especially with Amanda going off to college soon. You're making this a lot easier. Craig smiles at me. Hey. Feels really good to go on another bro venture with you, dude. Just like old times. For a while, I forgot about anything that was bothering me in life. And it was just you and me and more coffee. <laughs> oh, uh, no thank you. So, do you like work out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, mostly calisthenics, but I try to lift as part of the regimen. That's so cool. I've been looking for a workout buddy, you know. I wish I could help you out, but I'm enjoying brunch with my workout bro right now. Hello. Well, if you change your mind. The waitress slides a folded note to Craig and walks away. Craig makes a face as he reluctantly puts it in his pocket, into his pocket. Wait, did we get our food already? Rip that shit up and throw it at her. Uh, we can't take you anywhere, can we? Uh, it's a blessing and a curse, isn't it? The next time we hang out should be in the middle of the woods where people can interrupt us. And also, maybe in some different woods then, the ones where little kids like to vivisect things. <laughs> Craig laughs. Dude. Man, remember all our camping road trips back in the day? Joshua Tree, Yellowstone, that was the best. Oh. I'd give anything to do that all over again. Dude, we should do a camping weekend. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know, bro. I'm an adult now. I have all these adult responsibilities. I don't think I can just drop everything and go hang out in the woods for a few days, you know? Come on, dude. If we plan things right, we can do this. Craig, don't you ever do anything for yourself? Craig stares into his coffee mug. Oh. Of course I do. Yeah, like what? Oh. Sometimes I let myself have one scoop of vanilla ice cream before bed. But Donald Trump has two scoops! You're not living it up, Craig! But only if I didn't meet any caloric caloric intake for the day. I don't know. And sometimes I let myself hit the snooze alarm, but only once. Dude, you gotta relax sometime, or it's going it's gonna kill you. Please come camping with me. It'd be so fun, bro. Uh -huh. I guess I could get Smashly to take the kids for the week weekend. Oh. I'll think about it. Nice. We finish our brunches and head back to the cul-de-sac. Dude, just let one of those horny ma like moms take care of you. Oh, I think Smashly might have been one of the horny moms. Well, whatever. They're going to do a really good job because they want to impress you, so they're going to take really good care of your kids. Hmm. By the way, great job keeping up today. It seems like you're already making a lot of progress. Ha, I'm probably going to need a bit of recovery time after this. Tell the girls I said hello. I will. See you, protective. <sighs> Uh, uh. 
I say goodbye to Craig and step inside. God, I'm ready for a shower, a gallon of water, and a nap. Oh, it's the ex-wife? All right. Hmm, I bet Am Amanda's still asleep. I crack open her door to find her still in bed, sleepily scrolling through her phone. Morning. Afternoon, actually. Right, how was brunch? It was good. We got a kind of sidetracked because we had to travel into the depths of Maple Bay's dark underbelly to find a toy. 